العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم باب الحجر لفلس أو غيره This chapter, interdiction they call it or bankruptcy or freezing a person, person's assets طيب can we, can we have the questions later, Mubad? Write it down, inshallah. I'm going to try and finish in this chapter, inshallah. But this chapter, again, is another chapter that shows us the completeness of the Sharia of Islam. The completeness of the Sharia of Islam. So a person, if he owes a lot of people, or he owes a person and he refuses to pay him, then his wealth can be frozen, his assets can be frozen, and he can be taken to court and so on. طيب. Also, if a person is young, yatim, مثلاً, or if a person is safi, foolish, or if a person is majnoon, is insane, then their wali, their guardian, has to look after their money for them, and they're not allowed to spend. They're not allowed to spend. As you remember, from the shurud of uh, al-bayt, it was what? Huh? A person has to be a person of, a person who is not foolish. Uh, so, tasarruf, the fuqaha, they use this term, the person has to be jaizu tasarruf, a person who is allowed to uh, have dealings, <coughs> spend and buy and so on. طيب. The shaykh says, وَمَنْ لَهُ الْحَقُّ فَعَلَيْهِ أَنْ يُنْذِرَ الْمُعْسِرِ So if a, the, the creditor, the person that is owed a haq, the person that is owed a haq, فَعَلَيْهِ upon him and يُنْذِرَ الْمَعْسِرِ That he waits for the person that he owes, the, that owes him the money. So, مثلا, Abdali owes me money. The Sheikh says, عَلَيَّ upon me is that I wait for Abdullah. I don't say to him, listen, you owe me money and so on. Uh, I want it now, I want, you know. If he can't pay, obviously. Allah says, وَإِنْ كَانَ ذُو عُسْرَةٍ فَنَذِرَةٌ إِلَى مَيْسَرَةٍ If a person is a person who is not able to pay, then for another Rasulullah, then we have to wait until he's well off and he, until he's able to pay the money. So that is the first wajib. That if he owes me, I need to wait until he's able to pay. And it is befitting. So that is the mu'asir. So Abdullah is a mu'asir. He can't pay. He doesn't have any money. What is wajib upon me to do? To wait for him. Sah? Taib. وَيَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُيَسِّرَ عَلَى الْمُوسِرِ لكن مثلا عمر also owes me money لكن عمر is well off he's able to pay the debt he's the Muslim the Sheikh says وَيَنْبَغِ أَنْ يُيَسِّرَ is befitting the I is make it easy for Abdullah uh, for Umar as well so with Abdullah I had to wait because Abdullah is not able to pay صح? لكن with Umar he's well off he's able to pay لكن even with Umar يَنْبَغِ أَنْ يُيَسِّرَ it is befitting that I make it easy for him how can I make it easy for him? By saying to him, you don't have to pay me all of it. Or you can pay me in six months time if you want. Or I forgive you. Eh? Or I can give you, you can pay in installments and so on. That is how you can make it easy for him. وَمَنْ عَلَيْهِ الْحَقِّ Okay. And this is the next masala. So now that was the first masala that he started the chapter of Rahimahullah was advising me what I should do as the person who is owed the money. The next masala is وَمَنْ عَلَيْهِ الْحَقِّ As for the one that owes the haqq Abdullah in our situation فَعَلَيْهِ الْوَفَاء فَعَلَيْهِ الْوَفَاء Why do I keep saying Abdullah or Muhammad or someone? In biyu' in general, it's easy when you name a person Also like inheritance Inheritance They say in order to understand inheritance, kill your neighbor أَمِّ تَجَارَكْ <laughs> What does it mean, kill your neighbor? Instead of saying if a person inherits this, this, that, just say if my neighbor inherits, then his child, he's got four children, which of those children inherit? He's got a mother, he's got a grandchild, you know? That, that, it makes it easy when you put names to it. وَمَنْ عَلَيْهِ الْحَقِّ The person who, is, uh, who owes the haqq فَعَلَيْهِ الْوَفَاءُ كَامِلًا فَعَلَيْهِ الْوَفَاءُ كَامِلًا It is upon him to pay the person in totality, يعني pay the complete debt that is wajib upon him. بِالْقَدْرِ وَالصِّفَاتِ In terms of the quantity and the quality The amount that he took and the quality of the items that he took Allah Jalla wa Ala says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْفُوا بِالْعُقُودِ O you who believe, fulfill your contracts and your oaths So if you take 
a certain amount of money from a person, then you're giving the exact same amount back. If you take animals from a person, a certain number of animals, then you give the same amount in quality and in quantity. Allah, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مطل الغني ظلم ومن أتبع على ملي فليتبع طيب procrastination they call it so المطل الغني مطل is well مطل is a person who owes another person money لكن he keeps delaying it he's able to pay he's a غني he's well off he's able to pay لكن he keeps saying like I'm gonna give it to you next week I'm gonna give it to you next week and then when next week comes I'm gonna pay you next month and then he keeps saying, he keeps delaying it. So the Messenger Sallallahu said, Madlul Ghaniyyi, delaying the repaying of a debt is dhulmun. It is impermissible. طيب, so that's the first masala. وَمَنْ أُتْبِعَ عَلَى مَلِيٍّ فَلْيَتْبَعَ طيب, And whoever is transferred over to someone else, then let him يعني, go to that person, the third person. That is Hawala. We're going to study at the end of this chapter, inshallah, at the end of the class, maybe today or next week. That is called Hawala. طيب. وهذا من المياسرة. وهذا من المياسرة. And take it, allowing the transfer. Hawala in summary means, مثلا, Abdullah owes me a certain amount of money. طيب. لكن Umar also owes Abdullah a certain amount of money. So Abdullah says to, him, says to me, listen, I don't have your money right now, Lakin Umar owes me X amount of money. Please go to him. I have to go to Umar now. Is that understood? That is what Hawala is. We'll see at the end of the chapter, inshallah. And that is from making it easy for the person. That is from the Muyasara, making it easy. And the Sheikh at the beginning of the chapter, he said, we have to make it easy for the person that we owe the money to, right? Or the person that owes us money, Afwan. So from making it easy upon him is allowing the transfer. طيب. فالمليو, the person who is well off, is هو القادر على الوفاء. Number one, put number one there. فالملي, who is Mali? Mali, that has been mentioned in the hadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. The one that is delaying it. He is القادر على الوفاء, the person who is able to pay. The person who is able to pay the money or whatever it is that he owes. Alladhi number two, Alladhi laysa mumatilan. Alladhi laysa mumatilan. He is not a person who keeps delaying the money. He is a person who is a person that keeps delaying the money. So now we're still talking about the transferring of money. He is a person that is not going to say to me, listen, I'm going to give it back to you after, man. I'm going to give it back to you six weeks' time or seven months' time, whatever. This is the person, Umar, in this situation. So Abdullah said to him, go to Umar, he owes you money. He owes me money, he will pay you money. So Umar has to be a person who is able to pay the money. He has to be a lady laysa mumadala. He has to be a person that is not going to keep delaying, delaying, delaying and saying, I'm going to pay you back then and there. وَيُمْكِنُ تَحْضِيرُهُ لِمَجْلِسِ الْحُكُمُ And it has to be possible for me to bring him to the mahkamah. It has to be possible for me to bring him to the mahkamah. Should he not pay? طيب. What does that exclude? مثلا, a person can't transfer me to someone who I know. He's someone that is known for deception and so on. That sort of person I don't have to accept uh, that transfer. Or a person who is, for example, a, a, that works in the government. Why a person that works in the government or the sultan? Because I can't take him to court. He's going to use whatever power he has, working in the background, to delay that court case all the time. And then even if I bring him to court, the judge is going to rule against me because he knows him. Or because he's a person of position. So he has to be a person who I can take to court. Likewise, the fuqaha also mentioned that he can't be my father, for example, because I can't take my father to court, they say. Aqlan or shagan. وَإِذَا كَانَتِ الدُّيُونُ So now he's going to go into uh, the next masala of when it's permissible to freeze a person's assets. وَإِنْ كَانَتِ الدُّيُونُ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ مَالِ الْإِنسَانِ If the duyun, the debt, is that is up, that, the debt that is upon a person, if it is more than his man, than the man that he has. Okay? وَطَلَبَ الْغُرَمَاءُ And the person that he, the people that he owes the money to 
or ba'dhum, or some of them, or ba'dhum, or some of them, they ask min al-hakim an yuhjar alayhi, they ask for his assets to be frozen, what happens? First and foremost, the people that, a person who owes money is one of three. Is one of three, write this down. A person who owes money to others is one of three. The first person is a mu'sir, a person who doesn't have money to pay back whatever he owes. He can't pay it back because he doesn't have money. Muhammad owes me money, lakin Muhammad is a mu'sir, he can't pay back at this particular moment. What is yani, befitting for me to do or what is wajib for me to do? I give him time for another ratun illa ma That's the first chap- the first masala that we studied. The second is a person who owes others money and the money that he has is actually more than the debts that he owes. So he's got for example a hundred thousand in his bank. Or he owes a hundred he owns a hundred thousand. Like he owes eighty thousand to four or five different people. With that sort of individual, it's wajib upon him to pay these people, whether it's a hakim or a judge or someone that rules against him, he has to pay these people back. Like if we don't freeze or oh, his assets shouldn't be frozen. Why? Because he's able to pay it back. Is that money? No. He, well, he could be a million, he could be someone that's delaying it, but it's nothing to do with the situation, the, the, the masala that we're talking about now. He could be a million, he could be a person that delays it all the time. Now, the person, yani, uh, maluhu akthar min daynihi. Maluhu akthar min al-dayun alati alayhi. His mal, the wealth that he has, is more than the dayn that is upon him, that he owes. So that sort of person, he has to pay. And if he's taken to court, then the hakim makes him pay. طيب. The third person is the one that the Sheikh mentions, Rahimahullah. إِذَا كَانَتِ الدُّيُونَ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ مَالِ الْإِنسَانِ Like, what about if it's... And the third situation is, if the man that I have and the, uh, the debt that I owe, the debt is more. The debt is more. So for example, I only have about... 50,000. I have the 50. Pay attention to this example. I only have 50,000 pounds. I owe 100,000. Which is more? My debt or the money that I have? The debt is more. This is the person that we're talking about now, or that the Sheikh is talking about. So if this is the situation where his debt is more, and the people that he owes money to, they ask the Hakim or the judge to freeze his assets, what happens? Hajar alayhi. So Hajar alayhi, right on top of that, al hukum. Right on top of that, al hukum. The hukum is what? Hajar alayhi. His assets are frozen, so he can't use them. We prevent him from using his assets. The Sheikh says, وَمَنَعَهُ مِنَ التَّصَرُّفِ فِي جَمِيعِ مَالِهِ And he prevents him from using all of his wealth. He prevents him from using all of his wealth. He prevents him from using all of his wealth. Like in obviously excluding his basic necessities, his home and so on. So you can't freeze his, where, wherever it is that he's living, and his property, uh, the equipment that he uses in his house, that, anything over that. Right. Then his money, uh, then whatever he owes is changed into money. So for example, if this 50,000 that he has is a car that is worth 50,000 or if he's got two houses for example and he doesn't live in one of those then that house is sold and it's turned into cash, it's turned into money or the car is sold and it's turned into money. If the money that he has is cash already then it doesn't need to be turned into cash because it already is what? It already is cash. طيب. So he says, Rahimahullah, it, he's Assets are to be frozen and he's prohibited from using his man. Then his money is changed into money. If it, or his wealth is changed into money. But if it is money already, it doesn't obviously need to be what? Changed because it's already money. The shield says, and then what happens? And then what happens? 
وَيُقَسِّمُهُ عَلَى الْغُرَمَاءِ بِقَدْرِ دُيُونِهِمْ And then the money that comes out of How much did I say? I had 50,000, صح? And I owe how much? 100,000 The people that I owe it to That I owe the money to Whether they're two, three or four or five What happens? They need their money back, صح? لكن the money that I have Is half of what? What I owe, صح? So the Sheikh says, وَيُقَسِّمُهُ عَلَى الْغُرَمَاءِ بِقَدْرِ دُيُونِهِمْ Depending on the amount of money that they owe. So what happens? Now, I, I can only pay half of the debt, sir. Huh? I can only pay half of the debt. What if I owe a person, a 100,000 as I said, the examples were 100,000. But I only have 50,000. I only have 50,000. And there are five people that are waiting for me, I owe them what? I owe them how much? A certain amount of money, wherever it may be, regardless of what it is. Every single person that I owe this money, five, whether they're five in number or three in number or four in number, they each get half of what I owe them. They each get half of what I owe them. So for example, if Ali over here, if I owed him 20,000, he gets what? 10,000 back. If I owed Yusuf 10,000, Yusuf gets how much back? 5,000. If I owed someone else 30,000, they get how much back? 15,000. Depending obviously up until the money is, the, the, the amount ends. So that is what the Sheikh means by يُقَسِّمُهُ and it is divided على الغرمائت, is The Ghurama are those people that he owes the money to. بِقَدْرِ دُيُونِهِمْ Depending on the amount of money that they owed in the first place. طيب. Then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, وَلَا يُقَدِّمُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَا يُقَدِّمُ مِنْهُمْ يعني The Hakim doesn't put any one of them forward and doesn't give precedence to any one of them إِلَّا صَاحِبُ الرَّهْنِ بِرَّهْنِهِ Except for number one, the Sahibu Rahn. Surah Al-Mas'ala. مثلا, Abdullah owed me, Abdullah is the person that owes 100,000. He owes five different people 100,000. Including me But because I knew Abdullah is not going to be able to pay it back or I know he's obviously going to keep delaying it. I said to him listen Your car you have to leave it with me as Rahan Rahan we already studied it sir. So I say to Abdullah your your car is going to stay with me as a Rahan Is that understood? Right. Now I've got Abdullah's car as a Rahan Lakin Abdullah's assets have all been frozen, right? Abdullah, now, the money that he has will have been 50,000 It is to go towards who? The people that he owes, right? What happens to this sayyara that I have, his car that I have, that is Rahan? Do I give it back to the Hakim and say that's also Abdullah's property? Or do I say, la, I'm keeping this car because it's mine, it, it's the reason why I had it as a Rahan in the first place. Okay. 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 It will be, uh, be liquidated and it what? goes back to... Uh, I'm I take priority, simple. That's all it is. I take priority. Why? The month the Sheikh said, The whole reason, I. what is the difference between me and the four other people that he owes money? I actually have a Rahan. I have an item in my possession. And the whole reason I had this item in the first place was what? So that I can pay I can sell it off if he doesn't pay me my debt. So the judge can't say, listen, the car that you have also bring it into Abdullah's possession and we're going to we're going to make the make it into cash and then pay everyone else. La. This car that I have, I keep for myself. Right? Okay. What if Abdullah owed me 50,000 but the car sells for 70,000? I take my 50,000 the 20,000 I give it back to the Hakim, the judge, so that he can give it to 
the remaining people. So that is who that is number one. That person, the, the sahib of Rahm, the one that has a Rahm, is not included in the Khurama, those people that are taking uh, 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 taking the money from the Hakim through freezing his assets. He gets prioritized. So his car, the car or the item or the house or whatever it is that I have as a Rahan, I can sell it off without having to go back to the Hakim. So the Hakim can't come back to me and say, listen, give the house so we can give it back to you later on or we can sell it off. لا. And also, وَقَالَ مَنْ أَدْرَكَ The second is مَنْ أَدْرَكَ مَا لَهُ بِعَيْنِهِ عِنْدَ رَجُلٍ قَدْ أَفْلَسَ فَهُوَ أَحَقُّ بِهِ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ The next person is a person who sells an item to Abdullah. He sells an item to Abdullah. مثلا, Abdullah owes 100,000, we said, to, some, to, to five different people. However, me this time round, I sold Abdullah my car for 30,000. Abdullah said he's going to give me the 30,000, but I gave him the car. I gave him the car. So, he has now got my car and he still owes me 30,000. So, then, when the judge started to look at the money, the wealth that he has, and we all come to the place, we all come to the mahkam, we find out that from the wealth that Abdullah has is a car. The car that I what? Sold to him. And the car is exactly the same. It hasn't been modified. He hasn't changed it. And he hasn't sold it on. Or he hasn't given it to anyone. He's still got the car. What do I do? I have a right to also take my car back. Because the Messenger Sallallahu said, Man adraka malahu, Whoever finds his mal, his wealth, Bi'aynihi, as it was itself, Inda rajulin qad aflasa, According next to a person or with a person that has become bankrupt, فهو أحق به من غيره. He is more deserving of it than other than others, than anyone else. So now I have my car, the car that I sold to Abdullah. He hasn't given me my thirty thousand. طيب. Now I can take this car and say, listen, just like the Sahib of Rahan, the one that had the Rahan, he said, listen, this is mine. I'm going to sell it off. I'm just taking my car back. So whatever you find from Abdullah, then you mix it between yourselves and take it between yourselves. Like in this car is mine now. Like in the certain conditions, بعينه, it has to be as it is. So he can't have changed it. The, the item has to be the same item. طيب. Also, Allah So he should not have sold it on. If he sold it on or if he gives it to someone else as Rahan, then now it is in the possession of someone else or there's another person's right involved. طيب. Also, the third condition, which is the most important, is that I have not taken anything from the amount of the sayara, the car. The car was what? 30,000, sir? If he's already giving me 10,000 and he still owes me 20,000, then I can't say, now this is my car. Why? Because he's already paid a certain amount of money towards the car. And I have taken it. So if I've taken 10,000 or 15,000 and he's only got half of that amount left to pay, if I find that car amongst the, the assets that are going to be changed into money, then I can't say I'm going to take that car. I have no right to it. Why? Because he's already paid for it. He's already paid for at least some of it. Mm -hmm. The second condition that no one else, that someone else is right is not connected to it. Meaning he hasn't, like, he hasn't sold it off to someone else or he hasn't given it to someone else as a rahan. And the third is that he hasn't accepted anything, any man, or he hasn't taken any man himself. So that is what happens when a person's man is frozen. Now he's going into the young person that he owes, that, that his willy, his guardian is holding money for him or the insane person or the person who is foolish Al-Hajr is of two types Al-Hajr is of two types Al-Hajr is of two types Al-Mahjur alayhi li hafzi ghayrihi A person who we freeze his assets and we prevent him from using his wealth for the benefit of other people for example, this situation that I mentioned now, Abdullah, 
Abdullah owes five other people money, sir. So by me freezing Abdullah's assets and, say, and selling his assets and not allowing him to take advantage of his wealth or to use his wealth, who benefits from it? The other people. It's for the benefit of others. Although he also benefits from it because he's free of any debt, he becomes free of any debt. Like in first and foremost, it is the rights of other people. That's why his assets are frozen or he's prevented from using his wealth. The second type is a person who is mahjur alayhim lihavvihim. So now we're preventing them from using their wealth or we're freezing their money for their benefit. For example, the young person. The young person who's a yatim, mathalan, I'm his wali, I'm holding on to his wealth for him. By me preventing him from using his money, him using his money, who is it benefiting? Him. him. The person who is majnoon or the person who is foolish, by me not allowing him to use his money, who is, bene who is it benefiting? Him. him. That's why for this one, I don't need to go to the hakim. I can prevent him immediately. I don't need to go to the hakim. Whereas the first situation, we need to go to a hakim. So the Sheikh says, وَيَجِبْ عَلَى وَلِيِّ الْأَمْرِ وَيَجِبْ عَلَى وَلِيِّ الصَّغِيرِ وَالسَّفِيهِ وَالْمَجْنُونِ أَنْ يَمْنَعُهُ مِنَ التَّصَرُّفِ فِي مَالِهِمْ الَّذِي يَضُرُهُمْ So the person who is the guardian of the people who are either young in age or a safi, a foolish one, or a majnoon, a person who is insane, not sane, it is permissible for, him to, for me to prevent them from using their money. In a way that harms them. Qala Jalla wa ala wa la tu'tu sufaha amwa lakum ulati ja'ala Allahu lakum qiyama. And do not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not give your money to the foolish ones. Do not give the foolish ones your money that Allah Jalla wa ala has made a means of support for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in this verse to not give them their money. Even though it's their money lacking, it is for their benefit. Also, we include in there the majnoon and the safi. And because of that, after I prevent him from using it, upon me is I cannot use their wealth except in the best manner, the best thing for him. When it comes to preserving this money for him, I need to preserve it in the best way. Even if I'm going to invest in it, يعني he says, أحسن. اسم تفضيل. In the best way. So even if I'm going to invest this money for him, invest in this money for him and I can either go into a transaction or a partnership that is going to bring him an investment of 50,000 or an investment, another one which is going to bring him an investment of 100,000 it is wajib upon me to put him into the investment that is going to bring him 100,000 because that is better, sah? in the best way also when it comes to preserving and also using the money then it has to be used in the best way also, I have to spend on them in that which they need. So, for example, if they need clothing, I can't say I'm, I'm holding the money for your benefit. No, I need to provide for them, provide whatever they need. If it's education, if it's education, then, for example, for a child to go to mothers or to go to classes, I can't say I'm not going to pay the teacher because I'm looking after his wealth for him. No, I need to pay the teacher. Why? Because this is his hajjah, this is his need. And this is what it means for me to actually what? Preserve his wealth. This is what it means for me to preserve his wealth. طيب. وَوَلِيُّهُمْ This is the next masala. Who is the wali? The shaykh says, Rahimahullah. Now, the shaykh says, Rahimahullah. The wali is Abuhum al Rashid. The father who is a Rashid. A person who is a sound-minded person. Who is a Rashid. Or you can also include the wasi, a person who is a wasi. So the wasiya is the person, remember when we were studying the four types of people that can represent someone, one of them was the wasi. So the wasi is the person who, for example, a father is dying, he says to, uh, the, he writes in his will that this person is going to be the wasi over my child. He's going to be looking after his wealth and his health and everything. Okay? فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ if he, if, the, if he doesn't have a father and there is no wasi, جَعَلَ الْحَاكِمُ الْوَكَالَةَ لِأَشْفَقَ مَنْ يَجِدُهُ مِنْ أَقَارِبِهِ If a person doesn't 
have a father, he's a young person, a child, or a majnoon, or a foolish person, and he doesn't have a father, then the hakim, the judge, can allocate or choose someone from his family who is going to be, who is the most suited person for him. Min aqaribihi wa a'rafihim wa amanihim. The person that knows, has knowledge of his situation the best, and the person who is most trustworthy. It could be his brother, it could be his, for any other member of his family. As long as that person is trustworthy and he is suitable for this role. وَمَنْ كَانَ غَنِيًّا As for the person who is a ghani, that is looking after the wealth of a young person, who is ghani, who is well off. So, مثلا, I'm looking after a young person whose father passed away. I'm also looking after his money. Lakim, I am a ghani. I am a person who is well off. Meaning I have enough to suffice with. فَلْيَسْتَعْفِفْ Then he shouldn't take anything from his wealth. I shouldn't take anything from this child. وَمَنْ كَانَ فَقِيرًا لَكِنْ if I'm a فقير, If I don't have any money, فَلْيَأْكُلْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Let him eat in goodness. Let him use that which is adequate for myself and for him. For myself and for him. وَهُوَ الْأَقَلُّ مِنْ أُجْرَةِ مِثْلِهِ أَوْ كِفَايَتُهُ So it is that which is enough for me and for him. That which is enough for him and for me. So if it's enough for me and him, like 500 is enough for us a month, but if we drag it on, it could reach about seven, eight hundred. I'm not allowed to do that. I have to suffice with five hundred, because that is what is adequate, and that is what is the bare minimum. After giving him, paying his rights, responsibilities, the madrasa, and so on, school fees, and so on, then whatever is enough and whatever is adequate. Like in, I can't go over, overbound and say I'm gonna uh, use the money however I want. طيب. طيب. So that is the last mas'ala. Like there's another mas'ala that the Shaykh mentioned, which is the hawala. Remember the transfer that I said to you we're going to delay to the end of the class? Hawala, as I said before, is for example, Abdullah owes me money. Abdullah owes me 100,000. Umar owes Abdullah 100,000. Abdullah says to me, listen, I don't have your money at the moment, but Umar owes me 100,000. Exactly the amount that you owe me, that I owe you, sorry, he owes me. So please go to him. So please go to him. What is the ruling on that? Hmm? Who? If I agree, no. it is wajib for me. The Messenger وسلم, said, uh, If I am transferred to someone who is a mali, someone who can pay, who is well off, and I can take to court, then I should, the Messenger commanded me to follow him and go to him. طيب. So there are pillars obviously. There's a Muheel, there's Abdullah who is saying to me, go to Umar. So Abdullah is sending me, he's called the Muheel. Al Muhal alayhi is man intaqala alayhi al haq. So Al Muhal alayhi is Abdullah. Uh, Umar, عفوا. Umar is the person who is called the Muhal alayhi. He's the one that I am now going to get my money from. So I no longer have any connection with who? Uh, with Abdullah. طيب. Now, so like in there's a condition, or there are conditions. First and foremost, when I'm going to, uh, when I'm going to Abdullah, when I, when, when Abdullah is the Muhil and he's, I'm the Muhal, Muhtal, so he's sending me to Umar, the amount that he owes needs to be equal. <laughs> So if he owes me 100,000, but Umar owes him 80,000, he can't send me to Umar and say, listen, he, he's going to give you your money. Because Umar only owes him how much? 80,000. He only owes him 80,000. So it has to be uh, the same amount that he is, that he is, oh, that he owes to me, that Abdullah owes to me. Also, Abdullah has to be pleased with it. It has to be with the permission of Abdullah himself. It has to be with the permission of Abdullah. طيب. So that is the last mas'ala, which is al-hawala. Next week we'll have we'll study bab al-sulh, insha'Allah. Now we're going to go on to usul al-fiqh. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa ahkamu billahi tawfiq.